Good morning, everyone. I'm Lauren Miller, the Poetry Out Loud Program Manager at the National Endowment for the Arts. On behalf of the NEA, the Poetry Foundation, and all of our partners, I'm delighted to welcome you to the first semifinal competition for the 2018 Poetry Out Loud National Finals. I'd also like to give a special welcome to poetry fans across, across the country that are tuned in via the live webcast at arts.gov. Whether you're watching online or you're out in the audience at the listener, you can follow the competition via Twitter at hashtag POL18. Since Poetry Out Loud began, more than 3.6 million students and 55,000 teachers from 14,000 high schools across the country have participated. The students you'll hear today have advanced from a highly competitive field of hundreds of thousands of Poetry Out Loud participants nationwide in 2018. Okay, now we'll go over how the competition works. Each student will come on stage to recite their first poem. The order recitation was randomly generated and will be honored for all three rounds of recitation. You can follow the order in your program. Students will begin each recitation with the poem title and the name of the poet. Judges are scoring recitations as they happen and they score by individuals, not as committee. Students will then recite their second poem, again in the order as the first round. We will then take a brief 10 minute break after the second round to finish tallying scores. When we return, the host will announce the names of the eight highest students, our regional finalists. These eight students will then recite their third poem, again in the order listed in your program. After the third round ends, we will announce the names of the fourth place honorable mention recipient, as well as the three students with the highest scores. These top three students will be named national finalists and will compete in tomorrow night's national finals competition. In order to keep the semifinal on schedule, we ask that you hold your applause until each recitation ends. Please silence your cell phones and other electronic devices. Please do not take flash photography or stand in the aisles to take photos or video during recitations. You may take non-flash photos and record from your seats. We have photographers and videographers documenting each semifinal and the national finals. Today's program will include American Sign Language interpretation on the right side of the stage. Before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge some of the people who made po Poetry Out Loud possible this year. First, our state and jurisdictional arts agencies and their respective Poetry Out Loud coordinators. Each was responsible for running a statewide contest and sending a champion here to compete at the national finals. I know many of you are in the audience to cheer your champions on. Thank you so much for your hard work. Next, I'd like to acknowledge the dedicated teachers and coaches who got their students involved with Poetry Out Loud and spent countless hours supporting and encouraging them. Thank you for your leadership and commitment to arts education. Also, the family and friends of our state champions who have come to Washington, D.C. to show their support. We have imagined you learned a little about poetry along the way, and we're thrilled you're able to join us here in D.C. Finally, to the many staff volunteers, thank you. I'd also like to recognize a few people serving important roles in the semifinal, serving as our prompter, Alex Schrag, and as our accuracy judge, Nancy Doherty. So now let's get things started by bringing our host to the stage. Felicia Curry is an actor, singer, and performer in the DC area. She recently finished a sold out run of Motown Hitsville at Signature Theater and has appeared at Joe's Pub, the Kennedy Center, Roundhouse Theater, and Rep Stage, among others. Please welcome Felicia Curry. Good morning, everyone. Keep that clapping going. We have a very exciting morning that's going to start today. I want to say how proud I am of all the young people that are here. I cannot wait to see what you're going to bring to the stage today. I hope you all are equally as excited, are you? Yeah, I like that. So before we get started, I'd like to introduce the people who have the very tough job of judging this competition, this semifinal this morning. We start with Kike Alvarez, is a poet, performer, and teacher. He has been writing, performing, and leading community arts projects in Washington, D.C. for more than 35 years. A graduate of Duke Ellington School of the Arts, his poetry and commentary have been featured on NPR's Let's Latino USA, and This I Believe, and in several anthologies. Kike Alvarez. 
Next, we have Christian Kahn, who is an actor living in New York City. His stage credits include roles on Classic Stage Company with the Flea Theater and the Acting Company in New York. Kahn also works as a teaching artist for the Acting Company and has taught Shakespearean verse workshops all over the country. Christian Kahn. Terry Ellen Cross Davis is a Cave Canham Fellow, and her work can be read in many anthologies and journals. Her first poetry collection, Haint, won the 2017 Ohana Poetry Book Award. She coordinates the O.B. Hardison Poetry Series at the Folger Shakespeare Library. Terry Ellen Cross. Seema Reza is the author of When the World Breaks Open, a memoir of essays and poetry published by Red Hen Press. Based outside of Washington, D.C., she coordinates and facilitates a multi-hospital arts program that encourages the use of the arts as a tool for narration, self-care, and socialization. Please cheer for Seema Reza. And as I've already mentioned, you all have a very, very tough job ahead of you. So let me just give a quick refresher for all of you on what the judges will be looking for in each recitation. The following are the evaluation criteria for Poetry Out Loud. Number one, physical presence. Number two, voice and articulation. Number three, dramatic appropriateness. Four, evidence of understanding. Five, overall performance, for which the score is more heavily weighted. And number six, accuracy. With those criteria in mind, let's begin the competition. Are you ready? I know I am. So, First up this morning, representing the District of Columbia, Felicity Ryan. Felicity is, you can clap for her, <laughs> Felicity is a sophomore from Washington Latin Public Charter School right here in Washington, D.C. She is attending today with her father and would like to invent a device that would allow the user to understand and speak any language. Felicity Ryan. Good morning. A Boat Beneath a Sunny Sky by Lewis Carroll. A boat beneath a sunny sky, lingering onward dreamily in an evening of July. Children three that nestle near, eager eye and willing ear, pleased a simple tale to hear. Long has paled that sunny sky. Echoes fade and memories die. Autumn's frosts have slain July. Still she haunts me, phantomwise, Alice moving under skies never seen by waking eyes. Children yet, the tale to hear, eager eye and willing ear, lovingly shall nestle near. In a wonderland they lie, dreaming as the days go by, dreaming as the summers die. Ever drifting down the stream, lingering in the golden gleam. Life, what is it but a dream? Representing Connecticut, Jasmine Kabira. Jasmine is from Farmington, Connecticut, where she is a senior at Farmington High School. Jasmine has been participating in the Poetry Out Loud program for three years and looks for a poem that creates a spark of interest when choosing her recitation pieces. Also, Jasmine would very much like a cat. Jasmine Kabira. To Have Without Holding by Marge Piercy. Learning to love differently is hard. Love with the hands wide open. Love with the doors banging on their hinges. 
the cupboard unlocked, the wind roaring and whimpering in the rooms, rustling the sheets and snapping the blinds that thwack like rubber bands in an open palm. It hurts to love wide open, stretching the muscles that feel as if they're made of wet plaster, then of blunt knives, then of sharp knives. It hurts to thwart the reflexes of grab, of clutch, to love and let go again and again. It pesters to remember the lover who is not in the bed, to hold back what is owed to the work that gutters like a candle in a cave without air, to love consciously, conscientiously, concretely, constructively. I can't do it. You say it's killing me. But you thrive. You glow on the street like a neon raspberry. You float and sail a helium balloon, bright spatulars button blue and bobbing on the cold and hot winds of our breath. As we make and unmake in passionate diastole and systole, the rhythm of our unbound bonding, to have and not to hold, to love with minimize malice, hunger and anger, moment by moment balanced. Massachusetts, where she is in the 12th grade at Boston Latin School. Her parents have inspired her love and the, of the wide range of music, from vinyl to impromptu karaoke nights. Shadi is here with her parents and teacher, Shadi Z. The world is too much with us, by William Wordsworth. The world is too much with us, late and soon, getting and spending. We lay waste our powers. Little we see in nature that is ours. We have given our hearts away, a sordid boon, this sea that Airs her bosom to the moon, the winds that will be howling at all hours, and are upgathered now like sleeping flowers. For this, for everything, we are out of tune. It moves us not. Great God. I'd rather be a pagan, suckled in a creed outworn. So might I, standing on this pleasantly, have glimpses that would make me less forlorn, have sight of Proteus rising from the sea, or hear old Triton blow his wreathed.
New York, Esme Sigbithia. Esme is a senior at the Brooklyn Latin School and resides in the Bronx, New York. Esme comes from a large family and has a twin sister. She is passionate about women's rights and climate change and would like to create a way of getting rid of excess carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Esme Sigbithia. Snake Oil, Snake Bite by the Ruba Ahmed. They staunch the wound with a stone. They drew blue venom from his blood until there was none. When his veins ran true, his face remained lifeless. And all the mothers of the village wept and pounded their chest until the sky had little choice but to grant their supplications. God made the boy breathe again. God breathes life into us, it is said, only once. But this case was an exception. God drew back in a giant gust and blew life into the boy. And like a stranded fish, he shuddered oceanless. It was true. The boy lived. He lived for a very long time. The toxins were an oil slick, contaminated, clean, but just as soon as the woman kissed redness back into his cheeks, the boy began to die again. He continued to die for the rest of his life. The dying took place slowly sweetly. The dying took a very long time. Representing South Carolina, Janae Claxton. Janae is a senior at First Baptist School in Charleston, South Carolina. Both of Janae's parents are retired military, which allowed her and her family to travel all over the globe and experience different cultures. She is here today with her parents, Janae Claxton. The Gaff by C.K. Williams. One. If that someone who's me, yet not me, yet who judges me, is always with me as he is, shouldn't he have been there when I said so long ago that thing I said? If he who rakes me with such not trivial shame for minor sins now. Were there then? Shouldn't he have warned me? He'd even now devastate me for my unpardonable affront. I'm a child then, yet already I've composed this conscience beast who harries me. 
Is there anything else I can say with certainty about who I was? Except that I, that he, could already draw from infinitesimal transgressions, complex chords of remorse, and orchestrate ever undiminishing retribution from the hapless rest of myself? Two, the son of some friends of my parents has died. And my parents, paying their call, take me along. And I'm sent out with the dead boy's brother and some others to play. We're joking around, and some words come to my mind, which to my amazement are said. How do you know when you can laugh when somebody dies? Your brother dies. Is what's said. And the others go quiet. The backyard goes quiet. Everyone stares. And I want to know now why that someone in me who's me, yet not me, let me say it. Shouldn't he have told me the contrition cycle would from then be ever upon me? It didn't matter that I would really only wanted to know how grief ends and when. Three, I could hear the boy's mother sobbing inside then stopping, sobbing, then stopping. Was the end of her grief already there? Had her, someone in her, told her it would end? Was her, someone in her, kinder to her, not tearing at her as mine did? still does me for guessing grief someday ends. Is that why her sobbing stops sometimes? She didn't laugh, though, or I never heard her. How do you know when you can laugh? Why couldn't someone have been there in me, not just to accuse me, but to explain? The kids were playing again. I was playing. I didn't hear anything more from inside. The way now sometimes what's in me is silent too, and sometimes, though never really, forgets. Representing Ohio, Caroline Delaney. Caroline is in the 12th grade at Chaminade Julian Catholic High School in Beaver Creek, Ohio. Caroline's favorite poet is Shel Silverstein. She grew up reading his poems and they hold a special place in her heart. She still has her old copies of Where the Sidewalk Ends, Falling Up, and A Light in the Attic. Caroline Delaney. Plaint in a major key by Jorge Sanchez. Without even leaving one's door, one can know the whole world. Lao Tzu. 
The rumble of the night sounds even in the bright daylight of morning. Life blooms amid the ten thousand things, but does not bloom amid the ten thousand things. Shrivel-eyed, I wake up and tend to the one, here and now, clamoring to be let out. Down with the gate, out with the boy, to the rooms of life's necessities, first to void and next to fill. The order is only order, which is disorder. The only disorder is the disorder that is order. We usher ourselves, each in our own way, back down the way for various brushings, combings, other groomings. Each in our own way, we urge the other toward some kind of growth. One to assume, the other to renounce. One to grow larger, the other to grow smaller, thereby growing larger. Words do not work. And when they do not, other words might. This makes more sense than it seems, works more often than it doesn't, except when it really doesn't, and then that disorder creeps back in. In five minutes, a different challenge. In five hours, a different one. Six more hours, the one is rubbing eyes, untangled like a dragon, shucked and undone like an oyster. The night slowly rolls a bed, and the words form stories, form sleep. The sleep of the 10,000 things the sleep that will echo the next day in the night's rumbling sounds in the bright light of morning. Representing the U.S. Virgin Islands, Milana Graham. From Christiansted St. Croix, Milana attends the St. Croix Seventh-day Adventist School, where she is a junior. She is passionate about two things, the versatility and beauty of kinky hair and the significant role it played in Afro-American history, and educating Americans about the U.S. Virgin Islands because many of them do not know they exist. Milana Graham. The chimney sweeper. When my mother died, I was very young. By William Blake. When my mother died, I was very young. And my father sold me while yet my tongue could scarcely cry, weep, 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 weep. So your chimneys I sweep, and in soot I sleep. There's little Tom Dacre who cried when his head that curled like a lamb's back was shaved. So I said, hush, Tom, never mind it, for when your head's bare, you know that the soot cannot spoil your white hair. And so he was quiet. And that very night, as Tom was asleeping, he had such a sight 
that thousands of sweepers, Dick, Joe, Ned, and Jack, were all of them locked up in coffins of black. And by came an angel who had a bright key, and he opened the coffins and set them all free. Then down a green plain, leaping, <laughs> laughing, they run and wash in a river and shine in the sun. Then naked and white, all their bags left behind, they rise upon clouds and sport in the wind. And the angel told Tom, if he'd be a good boy, he'd have God for his father and never want joy. And so, Tom awoke, and we rose in the dark and got with our bags and our brushes to work. Though the morning was cold, Tom was happy and warm. So if all do their duty, they need not fear harm. Representing New Jersey, Brianna is finishing her senior year at Do Dr. Ronald E. McNair Academic High School in Jersey City, New Jersey. Brianna Senna is passionate about dance and has danced with the Alvin Ailey Dance Theater Junior Division for 10 years. She is currently taking classes at Ailey, Broadway Dance Center, and Gibney Dance. Brianna Senna. Mothers by Nikki Giovanni. The last time I was home to see my mother, we kissed, exchanged pleasantries and unpleasantries, pulled a warm, comforting silence around us and read separate books. I remember the first time I consciously saw her. We were living in a three-room apartment on Burns Avenue. Mommy always sat in the dark. I don't know how I knew that, but she did. That night, I stumbled into the kitchen. Maybe because I've always been a night person, or perhaps because I had wet the bed. She was sitting on a chair. The room was bathed in moonlight, diffused through those thousands of panes landlords who rented to people with children were prone to put in windows. She may have been smoking, but maybe not. Her hair was three quarters her height, which made me a strong believer in the Samson myth and very black. I'm sure I just hung there by the door. I remember thinking, what? beautiful lady. She was very deliberately waiting, perhaps for my father to come home from his night job, or maybe for a dream that had promised to come by. Come here, she said. I'll teach you a poem. I see the moon. The moon sees me. God bless the moon. And God bless me. I taught it to my son, who recited it for her, just to say, 
we must learn to bear the pleasures as we have borne the pains. Representing Virginia, Remka Wana. Hailing from Fairfax, Virginia, Remka is a junior at W.T. Woodson High School. If Remka could choose a superpower, she would choose invisibility. When invisible, she would be able to listen in on conversations or even use her phone in class without the teacher noticing. Remka Wana. I Sit and Sew by Alice Moore Dunbar Nelson. I sit and sew. A useless task, it seems. My hands grown tired. My head weighed down with dreams. The panoply of war, the martial tread of men, grim face, stern-eyed, gazing beyond the ken of lesser souls, whose eyes have not seen death, nor learned to hold their lives but as a breath. But, I must sit and sew. I sit and sew. My heart aches with desire, that pageant terrible, that fiercely pouring fire on wasted fields and writhing grotesque things once men. My soul in pity flings appealing cries, yearning only to go there, in that holocaust of hell. Those fields of woe. But I must sit and sew. The little useless seam idle patch. Why dream I here beneath my homely thatch, when there they lie in sodden mud and rain, pitifully calling me the quick ones and the slain. You need me, Christ. It is no roseate dream that beckons me. This pretty, futile seam, it stifles me. God, must I sit and sew? Representing Delaware, Samuel McGarvey. Samuel is a sophomore at Tall Oaks Classical School in Wilmington, Delaware. Samuel loves the fantasy genre of literature, including the Harry Potter series, The Lord of the Rings, and The Chronicles of Narnia. He would like to invent a fully automated tackling dummy for solo football practice, thus sparing his little brothers much pain and angst. Samuel McGarvey. Beautiful Wreckage by W. D. Earhart. What if I didn't shoot the old lady running away from our patrol, or the old man in the back of the head, or the boy in the marketplace? Or what if the boy, but he didn't have a grenade, 
And the woman in Hue didn't lie in the rain in a mortar pit with seven marines just for food. Gaffney didn't get hit in the knee. Ames didn't die in the river. Ski didn't die in a medevac chopper between Contien and Da Nang. In Vietnamese, Con Tien means place of angels. What if it really was? Instead of the place of rotting sandbags, incoming heavy artillery, rats, and mud. What if the angels were Ames and Ski, or the lady, the man, and the boy? And they lifted Gaffney out of the mud and healed his shattered knee. What if none of it happened the way I said? Would it all be a lie? Would the wreckage be suddenly beautiful? Would the dead rise up and walk? Representing New Hampshire, Eleni Spiliotis. Eleni hails from Concord, New Hampshire, where she is a sophomore at the Holderness School. Eleni is an only child with a dog named Atticus. Yes, named after that Atticus. Because she attends a boarding school, she feels like she has a really big family with lots of siblings. Eleni Spiliotis. Aria by David Barber. What if it were possible to vanquish all this shame with a wash of varnish? What if you gave it a glossy finish? What if there were a way to burnish all this foolishness, all the anguish? What if you gave yourself leave to ravish all these ravages with famished relish? What if this your way to flourish? What if the self you love to punish, knavish, peevish, wolfish, sheepish, were all slicked up in something lavish? Why so squeamish? Why make a fetish out of everything you must relinquish? Why not embellish what you can't abolish? What would be left if you couldn't brandish all the slavishness you failed to banish? What would you be without this gibberish? What if the true worth of the varnish were to replenish your resolve to vanquish every vain wish before you vanish? Representing West Virginia, Jordan Marshall. Jordan is finishing her senior year at Capitol High School in Charleston, West Virginia. In preparing for Poetry Out Loud, Jordan worked with her theater teacher, Jeffrey Haught. And she also tortured her family with her constant repetition of each poem. Jordan's extended family is here with her today. Jordan Marshall. I sit and sew by Alice Moore Dunbar Nelson. I sit and sew, a useless task it seems. My hands grown tired, my head weighed down with dreams. The panoply of war, the martial tread of men, grim-faced, stern-eyed gazing beyond the ken of lesser souls whose eyes have not seen death, nor learned to hold their lives but as a breath, but I must sit and sew. I sit and sew. My heart aches 
with desire, that pageant terrible, that fiercely pouring fire on wasted fields and writhing grotesque things once men. My soul in pity flings appealing cries, yearning only to go there in that holocaust of hell. Those fields of woe, but I must sit and sow. The little useless scene, the idle patch, why dream I here beneath my homely thatch when there they lie in sodden mud and rain, pitifully calling me the quick ones and the slain? You need me, Christ! It is no roseate dream that beckons me. This pretty futile seam, it stifles me. God, must I sit and sew? Representing Rhode Island, Stephen Rosario. Stephen hails from Warwick, Rhode Island, and is a senior at Trinity Academy for the Performing Arts. Stephen's favorite playwrights include Tennessee Williams and William Shakespeare because of how they make him feel. Their work has inspired Stephen to create his own. Stephen Rosario. Mama Said by Calvin Forbes. The slice I ate, I want it back. Those crumbs I swept up, I'd like my share again. I can still taste it like it was. The memory by itself is delicious. Each bite was a small miracle, both nourishing and sweet. I wish I had saved just a little bit. I know it's not a literal cake. It's a thought that counts, like a gift that's not store-bought, making it even more special, like a dream that makes you want to go back to sleep. You can't have your cake and eat it too, Mama said. I was defiant and hard-headed and answered, yes, I can, too. The look she gave me said, boy, I hope you're not a fool all your life. Size, hand size, and never seeming small. I acknowledge there is no sweetness that doesn't leave a stain, no sweetness that's ever sufficiently sweet. 
tonight? A friend called to say his lover was killed in a car he was driving. His voice was low and guttural. He repeated what he needed to repeat, and I repeated the one or two words we have for such grief until we were speaking only in tones. Often, a sweetness comes as if on loan, stays just long enough to make sense of what it means to be alive, then returns to its dark source. As for me, I don't care where it's been or what bitter road it's traveled to come so far to taste so good. Thank you. Representing Maryland, Kayla Turner. Kayla attends Indian Creek School in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, where she is finishing her senior year. Kayla is passionate about sign language and aspires to be an ASL interpreter in the future. Her favorite novelist is James Baldwin. She loves how unapologetic and honest he is in his works. Kayla Turner. Life in a Love by Robert Browning. Escape me, never. Beloved, while I am I and you are you, so long as the world contains us both. Me, the loving, and you, the loath, while the one eludes must the other pursue. My life is a fault at last, I fear. It seems too much like a fate indeed. Though I do my best, I shall scarce succeed. But what if I fail of my purpose here? It is but to keep the nerves at strain, to dry one's eyes and laugh at a fall, and baffled, get up and begin again. So the chase takes up one's life, that's all. While, look, but once from your farthest bound at me so deep in the dust and dark. No sooner the old hope goes to ground than a new one straight to the self same mark. I shape me, ever removed. Representing Vermont, Vera Escaja Heis. Vera is a junior at South Burlington High School in South Burlington, Vermont. Vera grew up in a trilingual household speaking Spanish, German, and English. Living in the cold state of Vermont, Vera would like to invent a way to teleport to any warm place in the world when it's getting just a little too cold for her taste. Vera Escaja Heis. Spanglish by Tato Laviera. Pues estoy creando Spanglish by cultural systems, scientific, lexicographical, intertextual integrations, two expressions existentially wired, two dominant languages continentally abrazándose en colloquial combate en las aceras del soil. Imperio Spanglish emerges. Control, pandillaje. Sobre territorio, bilingual. 
Las novelas mexicanas mixing with radio rock and roll, condimented cocina lore. Immigrant. Migrant. Nasal mispronouncement. Baraja. Chismeteos. Social club, hip hop, prieto, street salsa, corner soul, and mixurando Spanish pop, farandula. Standard English classrooms with computer technicalities. Spanglish is literally perfect. Spanglish is ethnically snobbish. Spanglish is cara holy intelligencia. Which U.S. slang do you speak? Representing Maine, Alan Monga. Alan is a junior hailing from Westbrook, Maine, where he attends Deering High School. Alan's current literary crush is Tim O'Brien. He just finished reading The Things They Carry and loved it. If he could invent anything, he would create a time machine to take him to the past and the future. Alan Monga. The Song of the Smoke by W.E.B. Du Bois. I am the smoke. King, I am black. I am swinging in the sky. I am ringing worlds awry. I am the thought of the throbbing males. I am the soul of the soul toil kills. Wraith of the ripple of treading rails. Up, I'm curling from the sod. I am wailing home to God. I am the smoke king. I am black. I am the smoke king. I am black. I am weaving broken hearts. I am sheathing loves like darts. Inspiration of iron times, wetting the toil of toiling climbs, shedding the blood of bloodless crimes. Lurid, lowering, met the blue, torrid, towering toward the true. I am the smoke king. I am black. I am the smoke king. I am black. I am darkening with song. I am hearkening to wrong. I will be black as blackness can. The blacker the mental, the mightier the man. For blackness was ancient and whiteness began. I am daubing God in night. I am swabbing hell in white. I am the smoke king. I am black. I am the smoke king. I am black. I am cursing ruddy morn. I am hearsing hearts unborn. Souls unto me are her stars in a night. I whiten my black men. I blacken my white. What's the hue of a high to a man in his might? Hell, great, greedy, grimy hands. Sweet Christ, pity, toiling lands. I am the smoke king. I am black. Pennsylvania. Brooke C. Hallinar. 
Brooke is finishing up her junior year at Cedar Crest High School in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Brooke's favorite authors are Jody Picoult, J.K. Rowling, and Edgar Allan Poe. While she does not have a favorite poet, she loves reading about the nature of humans and of life. Brooke C. Hallinar. Monet Refuses the Operation by Liesl Mueller. Doctor, you say there are no halos around the streetlights in Paris, and what I see is an aberration caused by old age, an affliction. I tell you, it has taken me all my life to arrive at the vision of gas lamps as angels, to soften and blur and finally banish the edges you regret I don't see, to learn that the line I called the horizon does not exist and sky and water so long apart are the same state of being. Fifty-four years before I could see, Vroon Cathedral is built of parallel shafts of sun, and now you want to restore my youthful errors, fixed notions of top and bottom, the illusion of three-dimensional space, wisteria separate from the bridge it covers. What can I say to convince you the Houses of Parliament dissolve night after night to become the fluid dream of the Thames? I will not return to a universe of objects that don't know each other, as if islands were not the lost children of one great continent. The world is flux, and light becomes what it touches, becomes water, lilies on water above and below water, becomes lilac and mauve and yellow and white and cerulean lamps, small fists passing sunlight so quickly to one another that it would take long streaming hair inside my brush to catch it, to paint the speed of light. Our weighted shapes, these verticals burn to mix with air and change our bones, skin, clothes to gases, Doctor, if only you could see how heaven pulls earth into its arms and how infinitely the heart expands to claim this world. Blue vapor without end. Hi, everybody. I didn't want you to get nervous and think we forgot about you. We didn't, we're just taking a couple of minutes of break here. How great were those students? I was sitting back here, I am mesmerized by what you guys do. I am an artist myself, obviously, and I am so excited about the future of art here, watching what you all are doing. So thank you for that. Can you all thank them? And that was just round one. Ooh, they get to come back and do it again. Not yet though. Not yet. So, where is everybody from? So I, I heard a lot of clapping in between. Um, who's here representing Maryland? I'll start with the DMV, because that's where I'm from. DC, Virginia, and now how about everybody else? New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, Delaware, US Virgin Islands, yes! <laughs> Who am I missing? Say it, where? Ohio. Look, I need to go through my book. Are we ready? Oh, we're good. See? Who did I miss? Pennsylvania. I don't want to miss anybody, so scream them out right now. This is your chance. Yell out who you are, where you're from. Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Yes. <laughs> where? Connecticut. Is there a Michigan? Am I making things up now? South Carolina. North Carolina. All right, did I miss anybody? Because I want to make sure. Now you guys are making up words. What is it? <laughs> Maine, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania. What is it? What'd you say? Now they're done. 
All right, we're gonna get to say them all again because we are now moving on to round two. Each student will have the opportunity to recite their second poem. First up, from the District of Columbia, Felicity Ryan. The Children's Hour by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Between the dark and the daylight, when the night is beginning to lower, comes a pause in the day's occupations. That is known as the children's hour. I hear in the chamber above me the patter of little feet, the sound of a door that is opened, and voices soft and sweet. From my study, I see in the lamplight, descending the broad hall stair, grave Alice and laughing Allegra, and Edith with golden hair, a whisper, and then a silence. Yet, I know by their merry eyes, they're plotting and planning together to take me by surprise. A sudden rush from the stairway, a sudden raid from the hall. By three doors left, unguarded, they enter my castle wall. They climb up into my turret, o'er the arms and back of my chair. If I try to escape, they surround me. They seem to be everywhere. They almost devour me with kisses, their arms about me entwine, till I think of, of the Bishop of Bingen in his mouse tower on the Rhine. Do you think, O oh blue-eyed banditti, because you have scaled the wall, such an old mustache as I am is not a match for you all. I have you fast in my fortress and will not let you depart, but put you down into the dungeon in the round tower of my heart. And there, I will keep you forever. Yes, forever and a day till the walls shall crumble to ruin and molder in dust away. From Connecticut, Jasmine Kabira. If they should come for us, by Fatima Asgar. These are my people, and I find them on the street and shadow, through any wild, all wild. My people, my people, a dance of strangers in my blood. The old woman sari dissolving to wind, bindi a new moon on her forehead. I claim her, my kin, and sow the star of her to my breast. The toddler dangling from stroller hair, a fountain of dandelion seed at the bakery. I claim them too. The Sikh uncle at the airport who apologizes for the pat down. The Muslim man who abandons his car at the traffic light, drops to his knees at the call of the azan. And the Muslim man who sips good whiskey at the start of Maghrib. 
The lone Kala at the park, pairing her corto with Crocs. My people, my people, I can't be lost when I see you. My compass is brown and gold and blood. My compass, a Muslim teenager, snap back in high tops, gracing the subway platform. Mashallah, I claim them all. My country is made in my people's image. If they come for you, they come for me too. In the dead of winter, a flock of aunties step out on the sand. Their dupattas turn to ocean. A colony of uncles grind their palms and a thousand jasmines fell the air. My people, I follow you like constellations. We hear the glass smashing the street. And the night opening their dark, our names, this country's wood for the fire. My people, my people. The long years we've survived. The long years yet to come. I see you map my sky, the light, your lantern long ahead. And I follow, I follow. Next up, from Massachusetts, Shadi Z. Degrees of Grey in Phillipsburg by Richard Hugo. You might come here Sunday on a whim Say your life broke down. The last good kiss you had was years ago. You walk these streets laid out by the insane, past hotels that didn't last, bars that did, the tortured try of local drivers to accelerate their lives. Only churches I kept up. The jail turned 70 this year. The only prisoner is always in, not knowing what he's done. The principal supporting business now is rage. Hatred of the various grays the mountain sends. Hatred of the mill, the silver bill repeal, the best liked girls who leave each year for Butte. One good restaurant and bars can't wipe the boredom out. The 1907 boom, eight going silver mines, a dance floor built on springs. All memory resolves itself in gaze. In panoramic green, you know the cattle eat. Or two stacks high above the town, two dead kilns. The huge mill in collapse for 50 years that won't fall finally down. Isn't this your life? That ancient kiss still burning out your eyes. Isn't this defeat so accurate? The church bell simply seems a pure announcement. Ring and no one comes. Don't empty houses ring. Our magnesium 
and scorn sufficient to support a town. Not just Philipsburg, but towns of towering blondes, good jazz, and booze the world will never let you have until the town you came from dies inside. Say no to yourself. The old man, 20 when the jail was built, still laughs although his lips collapse. Someday soon, he says, I'll go to sleep and not wake up. You tell him no. You're talking to yourself. The car that brought you here still runs. The money you buy lunch with, no matter where it's mined, is silver. And the girl who serves your food is slender, and her red hair lights the wall. Next up, from New York, Esme Sigbithia. A. B. Sidarian requiring further examination of Anglican seraphim subjugation of a wild Indian reservation by Natalie Diaz. Angels don't come to the reservation. Bats, maybe, or owls, boxy mottled things. Coyotes, too. They all mean the same thing. Death. And death eats angels, I guess, because I haven't seen an angel fly through this valley ever. Gabriel? Never heard of him. No, a guy named Gabe, though. He came through here one powwow and stayed. Typical Indian. Sure, he had wings, jailbird that he was. He flies around in stolen cars. However, he stops. Kids grow like gourds from women's bellies. Like I said, no Indian I've ever heard of has ever been or seen an angel. Maybe in a Christmas pageant or something, Nazarene Church holds one every December organized by Pastor John's wife. It's no wonder Pastor John's son is the angel. Everyone knows angels are white. Quit bothering with angels, I say, they're no good for Indians. Remember what happened last time some white god came floating across the ocean? Truth is, there may be angels, but if there are angels up there, living on clouds or sitting on thrones across the sea, wearing velvet robes and golden rings, drinking whiskey from silver cups, we're better off if they stay rich and fat and ugly and exactly where they are in their own distant heavens. You better hope you never see angels on the res. If you do, they'll be marching you off to Zion or Oklahoma or some other hell they've mapped out for us. Next up, from South Carolina, Janae Claxton. A 
a satirical elegy on the death of a late famous general by Jonathan Swift. His grace, impossible, what? Dead, of old age too, and in his bed. And could that mighty warrior fall? And so, inglorious after all. Well, since he's gone, no matter how, the last loud trump must wake him now. And trust me, as the noise grows stronger, he'd wish to sleep a little longer. And could he be indeed so old as by the newspapers were told? Three score, I think, is pretty high. Twas time in conscience he should die. This world he cumbered long enough. He burnt his candle to the snuff. And that's the reason, some folks think, he left behind so great a stink. Behold, his funeral appears, nor widow's sighs, nor orphans' tears want at such times each heart to pierce, attend the progress of his hearse. But what of that, his friends may say, he had those honors in his day. True to his profit and his pride, he made them weep before he died. Come hither, all ye empty things, ye bubbles raised by breath of kings, who float upon the tide of state. Come hither, and behold your fate. Let pride be taught by this rebuke, how very mean a thing's a duke. From all his ill-got honors flung, turned to that dirt from whence he sprung. Next up, from Ohio, Caroline Delaney. The American Soldier by Philip Freneau. A picture from the life to serve with love and shed your blood, approved may be above. But here below, example show, tis dangerous to be good. Lord Oxford. Deep in a veil, a stranger now to arms, too poor to shine in courts, too proud to beg. He who once warred on Saratoga's plains sits musing o'er his scars and wooden leg, remembering still the toil of former days. To other hands he sees his earnings paid. They share the due reward. He feeds on praise lost in the abyss of want, misfortune's shade. 
far, far from domes where splendid tapers glare, tis his from dear bought peace, no wealth to win. Removed alike from courtly cringing squires, the great man's levy and the proud man's grin. Sold are those arms which once on Britons blazed, when flushed with conquest to the charge they came. That power repelled and freedom's fabric raised. She leaves her soldier, famine, and a name. Next up from the U.S. Virgin Islands, Milana Graham. A Song in the Front Yard by Gwendolyn Brooks. I've stayed in the front yard all my life. I want a peek at the back where it's rough and untended and hungry weed grows. A girl gets sick of a rose. I want to go in the backyard now and maybe down the alley to where the charity children play. I want a good time today. They do some wonderful things. They have some wonderful fun. My mother snares, but I say it's fine how they don't have to go in at quarter to nine. My mother, she tells me that Johnny May will grow up to be a bad woman, that George will be taken to jail soon or late. On account of last winter, he sold our back gate. But I say it's fine. Honest, I do, and I'd like to be a bad woman, too, and wear the brave stockings of night black lace and strut down the streets with paint on my face. Next up from New Jersey, Brianna Senna. I Sit and Sew by Alice Moore Dunbar Nelson. I sit and sew. A useless task, it seems. My hands grown tired. My head weighed down with dreams. The panoply of war, the martial tread of men, grim-faced, stern-eyed, gazing beyond the ken of lesser souls, whose eyes have not seen death, nor learned to hold their lives but as a breath. But I must sit and sew. I sit 
And so, my heart aches with desire. That pageant terrible, that fiercely pouring fire on wasted fields and writhing grotesque things once men. My soul in pity flings appealing cries, yearning only to go there in that holocaust of hell, those fields of woe. But I must sit and sew. The little useless seam, the idle patch. Why dream I hear beneath my homely thatch when there they lie in sodden mud and rain pitifully calling me, the quick ones and the slain? You need me! It is no roseate dream that beckons me. This pretty, futile seam it stifles me. God, must I sit and sew? Next up, from Virginia, Remka Wana. Negative by Kevin Young. Wake to find everything black, what was white, all the vice versa. White maids on TV, black sitcoms that star white dwarves, <laughs> cute as pearl buttons, black presidents, black houses, white horse candidates, all bleach burns clothes black, drive roads white as you are, white songs on the radio stolen by black bands like secret pancake recipes, white backup singers, ball players and boxers, all white as tar. Feathers on chickens dark as everything, boiling in the pot that called the kettle honky. Even whites of the eye turn dark, pupils clear and changing as a cat. Is this what we've wanted and waited for? To see snow covering everything black as Christmas? Dark pages written white upon? All our eclipses bright, dark stars shooting across pale sky, glowing like ash, in fire, shower every skin. Only money keeps green, still grows and burns like grass under dark daylight.
Next up, from Delaware, Samuel McGarvey. Very Large Moth by Craig Arnold. After D. H. L. Your first thought, when the light snaps on and the black wings clatter about the kitchen, is a bat. The clear part of your mind considers rabies. The other part does not consider, knows only to startle and cower away from the slap of its wings, though it is soon clearly not a bat, but a moth and harmless. Still you are shy of it. It clings to the hood of the stove, not black, but brown. Its orange eyes sparkle like televisions. Its leg joints are large enough to count. How could you kill it? Where would you hide the body? A creature so solid must have room for a soul. And if this is so, why not in a creature half its size, or half its size again, and so on down to the ants? Clearly, it must be saved. Caught in a shopping bag and rushed to the front door, afraid to crush it, feeling the plastic rattle loosened into the night air, it batters the porch light, throwing fitful shadows around the landing. That was a really big moth, is all you can say to the doorman, who has watched your whole performance with a smile. The half compassion and half horror we feel for the creatures we want not to hurt and prefer not to touch. Next up, from New Hampshire, Eleni Spiliotis. I Go Back to May 1937 by Sharon Olds. I see them standing at the formal gates of their colleges. I see my father strolling out under the ochre, sandstone arch, the red tiles glinting like bent plates of blood behind his head. I see my mother, with a few light books at her hip, standing at the pillar made of tiny bricks, the wrought iron gates still open behind her, its sword tips aglow in the May air. They are about to graduate. They're about to get married. They're kids. They are dumb. All they know is they are innocent. They would never hurt anybody. I want to go up to them and say, stop. Don't do it. She's the wrong woman. He's the wrong man. You are going to do things you cannot imagine you would ever do. You are going to do bad things to children. You are going to suffer in ways you have not heard of. You are going to want to die. I want to go up to them there in the late May sunlight and say it, her hungry, pretty face turning to me, her pitiful, beautiful, untouched body, his arrogant, handsome face turning to me, his pitiful, beautiful, untouched body, but I don't do it. I want to live. I take them up like the male and female paper dolls and bang them together at the hips like chips of flint as if to strike sparks from them. I say, do what you are going to do, and I will tell about it. Next up, from West Virginia, Jordan Marshall. 
Hip Hop Ghazal by Patricia Smith. Got to love us brown girls, munching on fat, swinging blue hips, decked out in shells and splashes, Lordy, bringing them woo hips. As the jukebox teases, watch my sisters throat the heartbreak, inhaling bass line, cracking backbone, and singing through hips. Like something boneless, we glide silent, seep between floorboards, wrapping around the hymns, and ooh, we clinging like glue hips. Engines grinding, rotating, smoking, gotta pull back some. Natural minds are lost at the mere sight of ringing true hips. Got to love us girls, just strutting down Manhattan streets, Killing the menfolk with a dose of that stinging view. Hips. Crying about getting old. Patricia, you need to get up off what God gave you. Say a prayer and start slinging. Cue hips. Next up from Rhode Island, Steven Rosario. Sonnet 15 by William Shakespeare. When I consider everything that grows, holds in perfection but a little moment, that this huge stage Presenteth not but shows whereon the stars and secret influence comment. When I perceive that men as plants increase, cheered and checked, even by the selfsame sky, vaunt in their youthful sap, at height decrease and wear their brave state out of memory. Then the conceit of this inconstant stay sets you, most rich in youth before my sight, where wasteful time debateth with decay, to change your day of youth to sullied night, and all in war with time, for love of you, as he takes from you, I engraft you new. Up next from North Carolina, Danny Cohen. April Midnight by Arthur Simons. Side by side through the streets at midnight, roaming together through the tumultuous night of London in the miraculous April weather. Roaming together under the gaslight, days work over. How the spring calls to us here in the city, calls to the heart from the heart of a lover. Cool to the wind blows fresh in our faces, cleansing, entrancing. After the heat and the fumes and the footlights, where you dance, and I watch your dancing. Good it is to be here together, good to be roaming, even in London, even at midnight, lover-like in a lover's gloaming. You the dancer and I the dreamer, children together, wandering lost in the night of London, in the miraculous April weather. Thank you.
Next up, from Maryland, Kayla Turner. The Song of the Feet by Nikki Giovanni. It is appropriate that I sing the Song of the Feet. The weight of the body and what the body chooses to bear fall on me. I trampled the American wilderness Forged frontier trails, outran the mob in Tulsa, got caught in Philadelphia, and am still unreparated. I soldiered on in Korea, jungled through Vietnam, sweated out desert storm, caved my way through Afghanistan, tunneled the World Trade Center. And on the worst day of my life, walked behind JFK, shouldered MLK, stood embracing Sister Betty. I wiggle my toes in the sands of time, trusting the touch that controls my motion, basking in the warmth of the embrace. Days end offers with warm, salty water. It is appropriate I sing the praise of the feet. I am a black woman. Next up, from Vermont, Vera Escaja Highs. I Remember, I Remember by Thomas Hood. I remember, I remember the house where I was born. The little window where the sun came peeping in at morn. He never came a wink too soon, nor brought too long a day. But now I often wish the night had borne my breath away. I remember, I remember the roses red and white, the violets and the lily cups, those flowers made of light, the lilacs where the robin built, and where my brother set the laburnum on his birthday, the tree is living yet. I remember, I remember where I was used to swing and thought the air must rush as fresh to swallows on the wing. My spirit flew in feathers then. That so heavy now, and summer pools could hardly cool the fever on my brow. I remember, I remember the fir trees, dark and high. I used to think their slender tops were close against the sky. It was a childish ignorance, but now tis little joy to know I'm farther off from heaven than when I was a boy. Next up, from Maine, Alan Monga. She Walks in Beauty by Lord Byron, George Godin. She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies. 
and all that's best of dark and bright meet in her aspect and her eyes. Thus mellowed to that tender light which heaven to God it day denies. One shade the more, one rather the less, had half impaired the nameless grace which waves in every raven dress. Oh, softly lightens o'er her face, where thoughts serenely sweet express how pure, how dear the dwelling place. And on that cheek, and all oh, that brow, so soft, so calm, yet eloquent. The smiles that win, the tints that glow, but tell of days and goodness spent. A mind at peace with all below, a heart whose love is innocent. Up next, from Pennsylvania, Brooke C. Hallinan. Flowers by Cynthia Zarin. This morning, I was walking upstairs from the kitchen, carrying your beautiful flowers. The flowers you brought me last night, Calla lilies and something else. I am not sure what to call them. White flowers. Of course, you had no way of knowing it has been years since I bought white flowers. But now you have, and here they are again. I was carrying your flowers and a coffee cup and a soft yellow handbag, and a book of poems by a Chinese poet in which I had just read the words, come or go, but don't just stand there in the doorway. As usual, I was carrying too many things. You would have laughed if you saw me. It seemed especially important not to spill the coffee as I usually do, as I turned up the stairs inside the whirl of the house, as if I were walking up inside the lilies. I do not know how to hold all the beauty and sorrow of my life. So let's give another big round of applause for all of our students today. Two rounds, incredible. Congratulations to all of you. Really, really well done. So now we will take a brief 10 minute intermission for the tabulators to finalize the scores before we proceed to round three. See you all in about 10 minutes, enjoy. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Are you excited to be back? We're not done yet. It is awards presentation time. So would all of the competitors please return to the stage. This is your opportunity, everybody, to give big rounds of applause for all of the wonderful work that they have done this morning. Our 18 state champions Congratulations, yes, keep it up, they deserve that and more. Out of a nationwide competitive field, these students, you ladies and gentlemen, rose to the top. And all of you can see and hear why. Congratulations. We'd like to now award a plaque to each one of our competitors for their achievement in representing their state in the national finals. Presenting the awards this morning are Steve Young from the Poetry Foundation and Lauren Miller from the National Endowment for the Arts. And we will start with Jasmine Kavira from Connecticut. Come on up, you get a plaque. 
and a photo op. <laughs> Very important. So this is where you can be loud for your state. This is the time to do that. Next up, we have Samuel McGarvey from Delaware. Felicity Ryan from the District of Columbia. Alan Manga from Maine. Kayla Turner from Maryland. Shadi Z from Massachusetts. <laughs> Eleni Spiliotis from New Hampshire. <laughs> Brianna Senna from New Jersey. Esme Sigbifia from New York. <laughs> Danny Cohen from North Carolina. <laughs> Caroline Delaney from Ohio. Brooke C. Hallinar from Pennsylvania. <laughs> Steven Rosario from Rhode Island. <laughs> Janae Claxton from South Carolina. Milana Graham from the U.S. Virgin Islands. <laughs> Vera Escaja Highs from Vermont. Remka Wana from Virginia. And Jordan Marshall from West Virginia. Once again, another big round of applause to all of our state winners. Congratulations to all of you. So, the eight students with the highest scores in the first two rounds will have the opportunity to recite their third poem. This score will be added to their scores from the first two rounds to determine the three students who will advance to the national finals tomorrow night. Those eight students, our regional finalists are Jasmine Kabira from Connecticut, <laughs> Kayla Turner from Maryland, <laughs> all right, Maryland, we hear you, but we got to get to everybody else, Shadi Z from Massachusetts. Esme Sigbifia from New York. Brooke C. Hallinar from Pennsylvania. 
Janae Claxton from South Carolina. Vera Escaja Highs from Vermont. And finally, Jordan Marshall from West Virginia. Let's give these students a minute to collect themselves before we bring them back onto the stage. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you so much. So now you can be loud for everybody. Congratulate the eight regional finalists. Woo, it's getting exciting in here. So how long did it take? Okay? Keep them a second. Okay. Was that exciting? It was, right? I was just telling the students how thoroughly impressed I was with them. How about all of you? I mean, what they did up here how many of you could actually remember those poems, let alone recite them in front of people? Exactly. <laughs> We're good. Okay, are we ready for round three? Are you ready for round three? So we are gonna start third round of competition, third poem from our eight finalists. We begin with Connecticut, if she's ready. There she is, Miss. Jasmine Kabira. Bereavement by William Lyle Bowles. Whose was that gentle voice? that whispering sweet promised me thought long days of bliss sincere soothing it stole on my deluded ear most like soft music that might sometimes cheat thoughts dark and drooping was the voice of hope, of love and social scenes it seemed to speak, of truth, of friendship, of affection meek that, oh, poor friend, might to life's downward slope lead us in peace and bless our latest hours. Ah, me. The prospect saddened as she sung. Loud on my startled ear, the death bell rung. Chill darkness wrapped the pleasurable bowers, whilst horror pointing to yon breathless clay. No peace be thine, exclaimed, away, away. Our second finalist from Massachusetts, Shadi Z. The Golden Shovel by Terence Hayes after Gwendolyn Brooks. One, 1981. When I am so small, Da's sock covers my arm. We cruise at twilight until we find the place the real men lean. Bloodshot and translucent with cool. His smile is a gold-plated incantation as we drift by women on bar stools with nothing left in them but approachlessness. This is a school I do not know yet, but the cue sticks mean we are rubbed by light, smooth as wood, the lurk of smoke thinned to song. 
we won't be out late. Standing in the middle of the street last night, we watch the moonlit lawns and a neighbor strike his son in the face, a shadow knocked straight. Da promised to leave me everything. The shovel we used to bury the dog, the words he loved to sing, his rusted pistol, his squeaky Bible, his sin. The boy's sneakers were light on the road. We watched him run to us, looking wounded and thin. He'd been caught lying or drinking his father's gin. He'd been defending his ma, trying to be a man. We stood in the road and my father talked about jazz. How sometimes a tune is born of outrage. By June, the boy would be locked upstate that night, we got down on our knees in my room. If I should die before I wake, Da said to me, it will be too soon. Two, 1991. Into the tented city we go, weakened by the fire's ethereal afterglow, born lost and cooler than heartache. What we know is what we know. The left hand severed and schooled by cleverness, a plate of weekdays cooking, the hour lurking in the afterglow, a late night chant, into the city we go, close your eyes and strike a blow, light can be straightened by its shadow, what we break is what we hold, a singular blue note, an outcry singed, exiting the throat. We push until we thin, thinking we won't creep back again. While God licks his kin, we sing until our blood is jazz. We swing from June to June. We sweat to keep from weeping groomed on a diet of hunger, we end too soon. Your third regional finalist, from New York, SMA Sigbithia. Often rebuked, yet always back returning by Emily Bronte. Often rebuked, yet always back returning to those first feelings that were born with me and leaving busy chase of wealth and learning for idle dreams of things which cannot be. Today, I will seek not the shadowy region. Its unsustaining vastness waxes drear, and visions rising, legion after legion, bring the unreal world too strangely near. I'll walk but not in old heroic traces, and not in paths of high morality, and not among the half-distinguished faces. The clouded forms of long past history. I'll walk where my own nature would be leading. It vexes me to choose another guy 
where the gray flocks and ferny glens are feeding, where the wild wind blows on the mountain side. What have those lonely mountains worth revealing? More glory and more grief than I can tell. The earth that wakes one human heart to feeling can center both the worlds of heaven and hell. Fourth regional finalist from South Carolina, Janae Claxton. I go back to May 1937 by Sharon Olds. I see them standing at the formal gates of their colleges. I see my father strolling out under the ochre sandstone arch, the red tiles glinting like bent plates of blood behind his head. I see my mother with a few light books at her hip, standing at the pillar made of tiny bricks, the wrought iron gate still open behind her its sword tips aglow in the May air. They are about to graduate. They are about to get married. They are kids. They are dumb. All they know is they are innocent. They would never hurt anybody. I want to go up to them and say, stop. Don't do it. She's the wrong woman. He's the wrong man. You are going to do things you cannot imagine you would ever do. You are going to do bad things to children. You are going to suffer in ways you have not heard of. You are going to want to die. I want to go up to them there in the late May sunlight and say it. Her hungry, pretty face turning to me, her pitiful, beautiful, untouched body, his arrogant, handsome face turning to me, his pitiful, beautiful, untouched body, but I don't do it. I want to live. I take them up like the male and female paper dolls and bang them together at the hips like chips of flint as if to strike sparks from them. I say, do what you are going to do, and I will tell about it. Your fifth regional finalist from West Virginia, Jordan Marshall.
on Monsieur's Departure by Queen Elizabeth I. I grieve and dare not show my discontent. I love and yet am forced to seem to hate. I do, yet dare not say I ever meant. I seem stark mute, but inwardly do prate. I am and not. I freeze and yet am burned, since from myself another self I turned. My care is like my shadow in the sun, follows me flying, flies when I pursue it, stands and lies by me, and doth what I have done. His too familiar care doth make me rue it. No means I find to rid him from my breast, till by the end of things it be suppressed. Some gentler passion slide into my mind, for I am soft and made of melting snow. Or be more cruel, love, and so be kind. Let me or float or sink be high or low. Let me live with some more sweet content. Or die, and so forget what love e'er meant. The next regional finalist from Maryland, Kayla Turner. <laughs> Discrimination by Kenneth Rexroth. I don't mind the human race. I've got pretty used to them in these past 25 years. I don't mind if they sit next to me on streetcars or eat in the same restaurants, if it's not at the same table. However, I don't approve of a woman I respect dancing with one of them. I've tried asking them to my home without success. I shouldn't care to see my own sister marry one, even if she loved him. Think of the children. Their art is interesting, but certainly barbarous. I'm sure if given the chance, they'd kill us all in our beds. And you must admit, they smell. Your next regional finalist from Vermont, Vera Escaja Highs. I am learning to abandon the world by Linda Paston. I am learning to abandon the world before it can abandon me. Already I have given up the moon and snow, closing my shades against the claims of white. And the world has taken my father, my friends. I have given up melodic lines of hills, moving to a flat, tuneless landscape, and every night I give my body up limb by limb, working upwards across bone towards the heart. But morning comes with small reprieves of coffee and bird song, 
A tree outside the window, which was simply shadow moments ago, takes back its branches twig by leafy twig. And as I take my body back, the sun lays its warm muzzle on my lap, as if to make amends. And the final regional finalist this morning from Pennsylvania, Brooke C. Hallinar. Constancy to an Ideal Object by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Since all that beat about in nature's range or veer or vanish, why shouldst thou remain the only constant in a world of change, O yearning thought that lifts but in the brain? Call to the hours that in the distance play the fairy people of the future day. Fond thought, not one of all that shining swarm will breathe on thee with life enkindling breath. Till when, like strangers sheltering from a storm, hope and despair meet in the porch of death. Yet still thou haunts me, and though well I see, she is not thou, and only thou art she. Still, still as though some dear embodied good, some living love before my eyes there stood with answering look, a ready ear to lend, I mourn to thee, and say, ah, loveliest friend, that this the meed of all my toils might be, to have a home, an English home, and thee. Vain repetition, home and thou are one. The peacefulest cot the moon shall shine upon, lulled by the thrush and wakened by the lark. Without thee were but a becalmed bark whose helmsman on an ocean waste and wide sits mute and pale, his moldering helm beside. And art thou nothing? Such thou art as when the woodman winding westward up the glen at wintry dawn, where o'er the sheep tracks maze the viewless snow mist weaves a glistening haze, sees full before him, gliding without tread, an image with a glory round its head. The enamored rustic worships its fair hues nor knows he makes the shadow he pursues. Welcome to the pleasure. I'm back. You know what that means. Can we welcome back the top eight to the stage? Big round of applause. And now, for the moment we have all been waiting for. As I read your name, please step forward. This region's honorable mention award goes to the student who finished in fourth place. This student will rec receive $1,000 in cash and $500 for their school library to purchase poetry books. This morning's honorable mention, from Pennsylvania, Brooke C. Hallinar. Let me turn my page. The three students who will move on to compete tomorrow night in the national finals. They will receive at least $1,000 in cash and $500 for their school library. But we all know that they've got their eyes on that $20,000 prize that is awarded to the national champion. In no particular order, here are the top three finalists. From Massachusetts, Shoddy Z. From South Carolina, Janae Claxton. And from Vermont, Vera Escaja Highs. 
These three students will compete tomorrow night at 7 p.m. for the title of national champion. Congratulations to all of our state finalists that we have seen today. Big round of applause. Thank you, ladies. Congratulations to all of you. Let's give a big round of applause to our American Sign Language interpreters for this round, Mia Engel and Jessica Gabrian. And students, can we give a big round of applause to the people who came out this morning to cheer you on, the parents, the friends, all of you. Thank you for being here this morning. The next round of the semifinal competition will begin today at 1 p.m. So go out, grab yourself some lunch, but come back and join us as the students from the South and the Midwest battle it out for the next three spots in the national finals. We look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow night for the national finals competition. Congratulations to all of you. And thank you, judges. Nobody thanks you all, but thank you for your work this morning. <laughs>